They call me Squirrel. What's going on, Squirrel Squad? It is your boy, the Squirrel. And you know, I've been thinking a lot lately about my buddy, Bill Bailey. And I keep thinking, I gotta dig back and do some Bill Bailey. I gotta go back. Go back to Bill. I miss Bill, you know? I'm gonna start going back to some of these guys that I enjoyed in the beginning of my reactions and try to dig up some new pieces for some of these guys and um, enjoy them again, because I really loved a lot of these guys. Bill Bailey was one of the ones I really adored that I did. So this is Bill Bailey shows off his incredible musical talents. Eight of eight out of ten cats does count down. So let's sit back and relax. This is a bit of a long one, but it's damn gonna be enjoyable. I can already I can already guarantee that just because uh, Bill Bailey's name is in the uh, title. So let's do it. It's your first time here. Do all kinds of British reactions, and I love Bill Bailey. And I may or may not be wearing pants. Here we go. What have you got for us? All right. Well, uh, Jimmy, I've got a little thing here I picked up when I was uh, on tour in Australia. Uh, you know, so I thought you might like this. Um, it's didgeridoo. It's, uh, it's a didgeridoo. <laughs> and I'd like to play you uh, the hunt. I worked at a bar in Florida, and there was this group of people that used to come play the didgeridoos out front. They'd sit on, we had tables out by and sit out there and drink Guinness and play didgeridoos. That's how I know what that is. Uh, it's basically like a big moaning stick. 100 greatest didgeridoo hits. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was one. Who could forget this? <laughs> one for lovers. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you when this was a hit? <laughs> <laughs> and what about the up tempo? <laughs> <laughs> of course, the Christmas hit. <laughs> there you go. Thanks very much. Yeah. That was only five. Where's the other ninety-five? So, John, Josh, you're hipsters. You're you're cool, too, right? young dudes. You're, how will you cope against the experience, the wisdom of Sean and Bill? <laughs> My tactic is to get uh, out of the words Sean that, uh, these two won't have heard of, like retweeted. <laughs> 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 Hold on, hold on, I know all about that. I tweet. Do you? I'm Do you? on the Twitter, or I'm the Twitter arty. <laughs> <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, why? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only on there because some bloke went on there pretending to be me, and he was having a much more interesting life. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'll show them. I'll show them. Oh, it's Tuesday, I'm having a Jaffa cake, walking across the room. <laughs> Sit down and have a Jaffa cake, mate, you'll hurt yourself. <laughs> Now, now, Sean, you and Bill, uh, you're old friends. Do you think that's going to help this evening? Well, yeah, and I also yeah. think I deserve some kind of prize for being the first contestant on Countdown to have a friend. I think <laughs> merit some kind of uh, achievement. And, Bill, we are very old friends. We first met, we, we had the losing garden at the Chelsea Flower Show. Yeah. Back in 84, wasn't it? That's right, yes. The one with the corpse in it. Yeah. <laughs> We go way back, way yeah. back. Yeah, and before that, we were cellmates in a Thai prison. <laughs> um, Sean, how do you think John and Josh can be defeated tonight? Well, I think there's a very good chance that they'll be thrown off course by uh, Josh's voice breaking. I think that's a good <laughs> chance. Uh, Bill, have you got a mascot? Uh, yes, uh, I have, actually. Um, and this is one of my most uh, treasured possessions. And I, and I, you know, I didn't really want to bring it at all, because I'd say it might happen to it, but it's a, it's a log drum. 100% uh, sure it's not a toaster. It looks... I know, it does look like a toaster, <laughs> doesn't it? I, I believe this is the thing that has been made for me to play it on. Hang on a minute. <laughs> this thing... This thing's really... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's not part of it. That's clearly not... That's a giant I think that's the table we've uh, all got. We've all on. got one of those, Bill. Well, one of these. Yeah, yeah. Everyone here. Yeah, we've all got one. Of those. Yeah, we've, one yeah. Yeah, we've all oh, got one. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's like, they made this table for me to play it on. No, no, Bill. It's, what? What the hell was on Joe's? Is that a hairbrush or a lint roller? Fucking hell, they gave me a girl's one. <laughs> <laughs> you can now see a little bit more of it there, right? How's that? There you can see that? Oh, okay, yeah, it's got, it's got a pleasing... 
to make it more easy, perhaps I'll put it blindfold. Of course, you can play a blindfold. <laughs> if you've just tuned in, you've gone quite mad. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, play, I'll play a bit faster for you. It'll be a bit more impressive, isn't it? So you start with a kind of. A... Musical genius, this guy. I have here some correspondence I had with the AA, uh, the Automobile Association, not the. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and they, uh, I, I didn't renew my membership uh, because I didn't have a car, so it seemed pointless. <laughs> but, they, uh, but they wrote to me with an increasingly uh, more sort of threatening tone. Well. And the first, the first letter was very sort of like jokey. So it said, "Dear Mr. Bailey, it seems you've chosen not to renew your AA membership. I assume this must be an oversight. <laughs> I look forward to hearing from you." <laughs> and then the next one was a little bit more. There's a little bit of a threat. It was, "Dear Mr. Bailey, I'm very concerned that I've not heard from you about your AA membership, which is about to lapse. Can you contact us ASAP, as you will soon have no cover and be vulnerable, like a hermit crab, soft and easy pickings for predators without its protective shell? <laughs> and on the last one, they really went to turn. Dear Mr. Bailey, I'm shocked that you would be reckless enough to leave the warm embrace of the AA <laughs> and strike out into the unknown, a cold and unforgiving place beyond our reach, where your future is at best uncertain, at worst, a living nightmare. <laughs> Leaving the AA, you have placed you and your family in mortal danger. <laughs> you have set the countdown on a ticking time bomb of despair. Picture the scene. A stormy night, a late model Renault Kangoo with a malfunctioning distributor cap. <laughs> <laughs> On the verge of the B3116, just where it joins the A39. Terror stalks the verge. That stricken vehicle is yours. The terrified driver, you. In your panic, you clutch the one lifeline out of this Dantean circle of hell. Your only hope, the AA. But then you remember, you cancelled the membership. You collapse on the verge, weeping, crying the bitter tears of regret, shouting, why? Why did I forsake them to die here alone? <laughs> Please let me know if you reconsider. <laughs> 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 the atmosphere on countdown with a little tune. How would it go? Right, well, luckily, uh, he provided me with this high tech piece of. Oh, Christ. Uh, <laughs> the CBB's keyboard. Because um, I think that, you know, the, the tune. That's kind of quite. You know, you're right, it is a bit. It's tension, isn't yes. it? It's a bit tense. Nerve wracking. So, in that last bit. That bit is a bit scary. I would change that to a more lilting Irish theme. Sort of like. for you, uh, Jimmy, is one of my favourite books. This is, there's, a, there's an instructive element to this show, so uh, I thought I'd bring on something to try and, you know, educate. This is um, a phrase book uh, called Practical Dialogues, uh, where th they're not actually practical in any way. It's an Indonesian to English uh, prose book, and um, they're just, they're not at all uh, helpful. But really, I'll, I'll give an example. These are not the sort of phrases, you know, like phrases, if you go somewhere, you, you, you're like, is there a restaurant near here, or uh, could you direct me to a bar? And this is a conversation between two people. And it goes like this. I'm going to see the dentist. Right now. <laughs> by five o'clock. <laughs> and then, what for? <laughs> <laughs> My toe. This, really, to have a tooth out. <laughs> What's the dentist's name? <laughs> Fadley. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a typo, I don't know, but anyway, fatly. And then Fadly. this is where it really goes on. He is also an actor, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> you are lucky. Why? You have handsome dentists. 
Not qualified, but yeah. but handsome. This is dabbling. These conversations are more sort of like uh, romantic. They're the kind of conversations you know you want to try and get to know someone a bit better. This one's called "Do you often dream? What is a dream? Something which one seems to see or experience during sleep? Tell me another definition." <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's laugh. <laughs> uh, a, a dream also means mental pictures of the future. Give me an example. <laughs> <laughs> Having dreams of wealth and happiness. Do you often dream during sleep? Yes. What did you dream last night? I dreamt I was kissing Sophia Loren. <laughs> <laughs> the theme of the night is instruction, education. I just want to run through the difference between the different keys, you know, because since the 1960s, pop music is now more and more in the minor key. It used to be jolly. It used to be very happy and jolly, but now most pop music is in the minor key. And it's slower than it used to be. We've, 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 we favour slow ballads in the minor key, like Adele is the classic example. Her ballads very slow and in the minor key. I wrote a song for Adele uh, called uh, You Left Me, but I'm not going to go on about it. He <laughs> 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 goes, uh, I met you down on the street and you said that there was someone you were on your way to meet and I knew it couldn't be me because I was the one that was there. <laughs> 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 For many hours crying outside your door Singing why, 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 why did you leave? Why did you leave me? Why did you leave me? Why did you leave me? You slag! You slag. But I'm not going to go on about it. The earliest record of Twat is, um, Someone's saying to his wife, give not male names to such things as thine, but I think thou hast two twats, a wife of mine. It's <laughs> <laughs> Sean. I've got two twats, yes I have, yes I have. <laughs> <laughs> that, old, that old country spare song. They'd stand outside pubs saying how many twats they had. <laughs> twat braggers, they were known as. <laughs> 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 I'm really nervous. I'm a bit of a Bill Bailey stalker tonight, so I just want to get it out of there early, but I've seen him like five or six times live and I'm just a bit nervous tonight. Okay. Um, <laughs> just, just I've got a few, I've got a few <laughs> maths problems I need to uh, <laughs> pull through. <laughs> you've, got, you've got a bit of a crush on Bill? Well, not I, I'm just, just more love, you know. There was a headline once that um, I'm signal, I'm signal. <laughs> oh my God, you've got it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this bit before. What's going on? I did see this piece before in another uh, thing, so it came up on the best of, but I love this. This is so funny. She's, it's like a, it's like a cute little smittenness. <laughs> it's two twats. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, got grade six clarinet. I mean, uh, <laughs> I think if Rachel was found peering into your kitchen window, you would still be the one that got arrested. <laughs> That's a very good point. Yeah. yeah. Okay, time to go across the dictionary corner. Bill, what have you got for us this time? Well, Jimmy, I've been recently uh, travelling in uh, Indonesia. All right. And um, you know, I like to try and pick up a little bit of the language. So uh, this goes book, book again. Uh, yeah. It's called Practical Dialogues. And it's supposed to be helpful little conversation starters. But the trouble is they're not actually that practical in terms of conversation starters because they do require the other person to join in a very specific way. I'll give an example. <laughs> These are all genuine. Uh, let me show you this one. I quite like this one. Uh, which way up is the, the pen going? Here we go. Tell me about plasma. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other person has to say, plasma is clear yellowish fluid in which the blood cells are carried. And you say, Oh, uh, what is blood? 
<laughs> they tell you, they say, it is a red liquid flowing throughout the body. And then they say, what happens if a man's heart stops beating? He dies. <laughs> anyway, cheerio. <laughs> this one is, it burns. <laughs> what does fire do? It burns. <laughs> what catches fire easily? Paper, hair, cotton. <laughs> have you insured your house against fire? Yes, I have. <laughs> what is a fire alarm? An apparatus for making no the outbreak of fire. Is fire destructive? When fire is angry, it can destroy. <laughs> Um, okay, this is my favourite. This is um, this is one about smuggling. This is great. Wait. I kept seeing the hand while Bill was talking, and they would switch over to the other table. Why is there a guy there with an umbrella? What the hell? Check this out. Hang on. <laughs> is smuggling forbidden? See this? I think this conversation is about someone who's thinking about smuggling <laughs> and is just chatting to someone on a bus to hope that they know. <laughs> is smuggling <laughs> forbidden? Yes, it is. <laughs> Why? It gets good secretly and illegally. What do you call a person who smuggles? A smugglers. <laughs> there are many smugglers in the world, aren't there? Yes, there are. What would happen if I smuggle opium into Malaysia? You would be hanged. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the cards on the screen tell me that uh, we're all done with this one. I um, I think it's funny, you know, when he's reading from the little book and the translation and how, you know, some things kind of get lost in translation a little bit and they get, you know, the translation's a little different than what you would expect it to be. God bless you, Bill Bailey. It's good to see you, buddy. I miss you, man. I miss you, Bill. Um, I really do. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was really nice to have some great, 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 fun laughs i needed that i really did it's been it's been it's you know it's it's been a stressful time i think for all of us you know what i mean I, oh you know i don't the kids are back at school and sports there's just so much going on you know i needed a good night where i could sit back and have a good laugh with bill and with all you guys so thank you for being here for that i hope you enjoyed it i'll catch you guys soon and uh we'll watch some more stuff together um but until then bob's your uncle and fadley is your aunt <laughs> Scroll up.